Testing, testing, testing. Okay, I decide. Well, I was talking with Paolo, Paolo, Paolo. I'll tell you, I'm gonna get his name straight. It's the last thing I do. Very good guy. He's really trying to help me out with my idiocy. <laughs> He's like, dude, you have like 5,000 friends on your Facebook page. That's just one Facebook page that he saw. Yeah, 5,000 on that page. You'd think I'd be able to get them over to the YouTube, but not everybody's got a YouTube page. Everybody's got a Facebook page and Twitter. I don't have an Instagram account. So, you know. Thank you very much for your help, though, Paolo. Paolo, Paolo, ugh. I gotta see his name. Well, Tony Borg, he helps, he's been, we got off to a rocky start, but he's been very cool so far. And all of you guys, Tony, Paolo, Vincent, Vincent, I know, that's my son's name, so, very good. Jason Hunt, Dave Whalen, he didn't guess but uh, all you guys got the the fake free elite guitar so very good it was pretty easy i mean as soon as i went like this and the light hit the neck and you could to me as soon as i i would see the neck that light and the pickups the way they work is this no matter how you look at it you can tell this is a paf and this is a Super Distortion. Exactly like uh, Randy's V. Because I said, cause to me, that's what was like, that sounded great. I wanted that sound. I didn't think the Les Paul was sounding as cool as it was, but this Les Paul was sounding incredible. So when he first ordered the V, he actually ordered it with two PAF pickups. Because he wanted the V to sound like his Les Paul. He loved that sound. But when he got it, it just wasn't working. So they decided to put the Super Distortion in and he loved it. So that's why all the Jacksons had a, a Duncan Distortion, which is just this. A little hotter. But to me, these are warmer sounding than uh, Duncan Distortions. I don't know why. JB's. Every demo you've heard of those songs I've done, like the three or so songs, that's all uh, Les Paul standard with JB pickups. Both positions. That thing sounds amazing. I haven't even used another guitar yet. <laughs> it's just been that. That's why you haven't heard any, you know, bars or anything. I was looking at some old paperwork I found, which I don't have, and I also called the guy that uh, used to work on this guitar, his name was Mike Lippy. is Mike Lippy. he's got his own guitars, he makes them custom now, just, you know, the typical Stratish looking, Gibbs, the Les Paul looking things, this is the coolest guitar he's ever touched, so he... He didn't paint this, but he knew the guy. The guy that painted this is a biker. And uh, so this is paint that they use on, you know, biker, you know, Harley tanks and helmets. And I said I wanted a white, like a pearl white, but he just went with a basic white. <laughs> it's white. And uh, with bullet holes, only bleeding where I would be, you know, where, like, so if I was getting shot at, and it would only be dripping from, because I'm there, but I had a guy do some extra blood, and he just started putting it everywhere. I go, you know, you're not getting the theme of it is, you know, someone, but now it's not kind of, kind of weird after dime, but he got shot from the back. Not that that makes it better. That's actually horrifying. And then, you know, 
I had that put on eventually by the time I was in Trick or Treat because I wanted people to know who I was and Trick or Treat also, you know, a little pen around there because we were going for the dark stuff and not doing that anymore, obviously. But, uh, so this, this is actually a 1979 Charvel star body, solid rock maple. One guy says rock maple, the other guy that worked on it said it was sugar maple. It's maple, one solid piece. I've got a picture somewhere of it with just black, t you know, they shot clear coated it and then I just put black tape on it, different things, you know, kind of like Nicky was doing with his bass. And uh, until I decided on this paint job. Because when I was graduated and I got my Marshall and I was ready to go, so I'm like, I got to get this guitar going. So I had the paint job done and then I had this put on and I was ready. I had a killer guitar and a friggin' Marshall stack, a white 82 anniversary. Sounds amazing. It's modded. Uh, you've heard it. So it's on the demos. It's on the, that stuff. That's the mark. kill switch so this doesn't work anymore because it died a long time ago and I had a kill switch put in because there was songs where I'd be playing and then I was sick of doing the volume I wanted it you know to play a chord you know so <laughs> It's doing that but I had this little kill switch put in in like 86 and it was great and everybody's like oh what is that a phase I go no it's a kill well what about this I go eh it's not for one it's not in a good place the best place would be here and that'd take a lot of routing or up here like Randy would be cool but I didn't even think about it so right here is perfect for me but it's that switch has gone through a lot of and it's just a mini toggle and on and off so stories man I don't know what stories are there to tell uh, I can't think of anything right yet hold on <laughs> Thank you. 
that's the way uh, Brad Gillis played uh, Children of the Grave. It bugged me. Because, you know, Randy just destroyed that. He killed that song. It was great when Randy did it. But Brad did a good job, too, but he wasn't doing the chunk. He wasn't, you know. <laughs> That's Brad. Listen to Speak of the Devil or Speak of the Devil or Ozzy is an Idiot. Whatever that thing is called. Uh... Ugh. Stratnet. So 79 and 78. I thought it was an 80 and a 78. All Maple. Marzio. One of the first five Kalers made. Put on by Kaler. I can't remember his first name now. This is actually a very historic guitar. Because I got the, I bought the, I had this. I bought it at Guitar Center in Hollywood when it was across the street. And it was a little dump and I liked it a lot better. And I went to Larry Larson and ordered this. And I went down and picked it up at Charvel. And they put it together for the first time. I go, will it fit? Because it had, you know, this is a three hole and this four. And I'm like an idiot. And they're trying to decide, well, maybe they should just make it a three. And I'm like, no, do it a four. Because I remember that's what Eddie did. I go, I want it to be four bolts, so they did that and attached it and uh, put a string through, which they've, you know, puttied up. You can't see it. You can kind of barely t start to see it now. It's taking years for this to uh, wear down, but you can see the little circles where this, this string will go through the body. I had that, you know, covered up. And uh, that put on. This thing is a beast. This thing is a beast. I've let it. I've let it slide down my leg and kicked it into the crowd at the Troubadour. The last time Trick or Trunk played, because Rudy was doing a drum solo at the end of the set, and he didn't tell me. Now, see if he would have said at the end of the set, I'm going to go into a drum solo. I would have waited. But I'm sitting here, you know, holding whatever note, you know, going wee, oh, oh, I'm like what the hell is he doing? And then Manny's just standing there and Tony's you know, I don't know what he was doing. And I'm like, this is stupid. What is he doing? A drum solo at the end of a set? So I got pissed and I let the guitar slide down my leg and I kicked it off into the you know, audience and my friend Gary it was Rodian for me, grabbed it, and everybody was there. So, like, friends of him, his were there, all my friends were there, everybody was there. Because they thought, wow, this is it, you know, this is, this friggin' band is kick-ass. I mean, we were the next big thing, and it just went, oh, Because Mandy's an idiot! See, the more I think about it without actually talking to him, because I haven't talked to Mandy in, like, nine ten years if we started talking probably wouldn't get so mad about it but he's just such an idiot and he his if i don't know if you've ever looked him up you know information his wikipedia page he put up it's all lies the whole thing is lies he's never gone on a tour anywhere 
except for touring with clubs. You know, Fatal Attraction at least toured. We did, you know, a bunch of states. Southwest tour, we call it, because we just started. First, we went to Arizona. We realized, oh, my gosh, we can get paid thousands of dollars just by getting out of this state. So we do that, then New Mexico, and then we just book shows in a big circle till we came back. And then we got written up in uh, Music Connection. I got to find that. See, there's all this stuff, and uh, Pablo Vincent, <laughs> he... He's like, you know, show all your kiss, you know, memorabilia and all this. I, It's all stored away, man. I, I'm kind of like a part-time in California, and then I get the hell out, and I go back up to Utah, and I come back to California, get the hell out of or Nevada, Utah, whatever, and then I come back here, and, I, you know, I'm around. Just, uh, one of the good things about being a bachelor is you can do what you want when you want. And the only thing I have to worry about is, uh, you know, taking care of my parents. That's it. And, uh, you know, I owe it to them. Big time. I mean, first they, you know, had me. Raised me very great. I had a great childhood. Unbelievably good childhood. I mean, no, nothing ever went wrong. It was like I was living in Disneyland until I, you know, got old enough to make my own trouble. And then everything went to hell. <laughs> but, uh... So, yeah, I just cruise around, and, you know, my son lives up in Utah. A friend that's uh, recording with me this, this, uh, this album. He's up there. A lot of people. So I'm always going back and forth. Um, you know, I had a house with my last wife up there in uh, Cedar, but she sold the house when I was in a coma, so that's gone. But I have property up there that's just south of Cedar and just north of Tokerville. And that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just back and forth, back and forth. So, stuff is like packed away. It's been packed away for like 10 years now. You know, when the divorce happened. When, when did I get divorced? 2009. Everything happened. Divorce, an accident, losing my It all was the same thing at the same time. Everything happened at the same time. She filed for divorce, and then she changed her mind. And then I didn't know it was going to go through... And it went through, so she goes, please come up, we need to get remarried. So I was on my way up to get remarried to her, and I got in the accident, and then she just let it go. So she really didn't divorce me in while I was in the coma. She just got rid of the house and moved on and took all my money, except for 7000 which she kept with a note saying, this is for uh, your funeral. And I'm like... How am I supposed to, supposed to read that if I'm dead and, gee, you just left me $7,000 out of, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars that I had in that? Oh, my God. But, you know what? It's just money. And I had a different account, like I said. So. Don't ever let money bug you like that. To me, it just comes and goes. What are you going to do? Sometimes you're flying high. Sometimes you're sucking dirt. <laughs> right now... Everything's cool.
Okay. Well, okay, so... He, he, Alright, so I'm trying to think. What did he say? What did uh, my, my friend say? That he keeps giving me these... Uh, you should say this, you should say that, you should say this. Uh, I never remember. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, okay, so we're, I'm almost to a thousand subscribers. This is so stupid, I should have them already, but... And once I do, and I start making money, then that will give me an excuse or a reason to spend more time making the videos, editing it. Because right now I shoot it, I chop off the front and the back because it's usually me picking my nose or my butt or something, and then done. Right now, I think I've already gone too long. So, what was that song? What was I playing at the beginning? I'm not going to tell you. You should know. I mean, it's sloppy, but hey. It's the song. different guitar players play this the guy that played it originally and then the guy another guy who's in Def Leppard now another guy who's I never really liked Jeff Golding and uh, my buddy Tracy G and he did a good job but it wasn't what I thought he was gonna do because this song you either got to stay true to everything because everybody knows every lick in the song I'm not telling you what song it is. You better know or I'm going to beat your face in. I'm sloppy, but I, I'm not that bad. I think, I'm pretty sure I'm playing it right. I know I am. I know it's that chord and a little, little finger thing because I learned it like 30 years ago or whenever it came out. And I'm just trying to remember. That's why I'm like, I'll play stuff and then I'll rem realize I didn't play that right. Like, shocked me it was playing wrong. I don't know if I can play it right, though. 